Alright guys, uh, so I'm going to do the ball bearing replacement for my front wheels as well. Last time I did for the rear wheels. Now, the equipment that's going to be needed here is obviously spare bearings. Uh, the number is 6204. You'll be needing two units of those. Uh, car jack to lift the front up a little bit. As you can see, this is already lifted just a tad bit above the ground. Uh, good paddock stand so that the bike is stable and it should not fall off. I will be also doing some other uh, service activities but as of right now first thing I am going to do is replace the ball bearings. Now other than this uh, we will be needing an old tyre to use it as a base so that you, know, you don't damage your disc as well as the rims. We will be needing a spanner which is 14 uh, this is a little slightly bigger so I'm hoping that this will fit otherwise I'll do some modifications to it maybe just a little grinding off the tips so that you know it just goes in uh, it's, this is uh, 916 so it's pretty much size 14 but this is in inches instead of mm so <clears throat> this is what you need uh, I have also got some extra grease to re-grease the new bearings I'm gonna uh, clean the old grease because the company gives you this very bare minimal grease in it so I'm gonna take it off and uh, fill up new grease into it okay so I am ready to open the wheel first uh, I have loosened this pinch bolt and now I'm gonna loosen the main sh shaft uh, from the or the axle you can say the, the axle of the uh, forks and I will also have to take out the calipers for the ease of taking off your the wheel in front Basically, when the calipers are not placed over there, it's very easy to take the wheel off. So, guys, the <coughs> shaft is off, but now, obviously, because the calipers are still in place, I'm gonna have to take them off, and uh, then only will I be able to take the. Okay, so the wheel is off the bike now. Now, obviously, I have taken both the sides of the caliper as well as I took the sensor out because. It is kind of attached over here, you don't want to get it pulled out. And the other benefit is when you take it out, you can clean it. As you can see, it is quite dirty in there. And there are a few scratches, which means the mud and the sensor were kind of, uh, you know, reducing the gap between the sensor, uh, this uh, rotor point. And uh, hence, you can see there are scratches on the sensor as well. So, yeah. The best thing is to do is take it off, clean it up, and put it back in. So I'm gonna take the wheel off. The bushes need to be taken out carefully. Make sure you don't forget to put them back. There will be a rod inside. Uh, it's more or, more or less uh, something which keeps the shaft in center. Uh, <coughs> that has to be also take, uh, taken out carefully. So one bearing at a time. I'm gonna take it out. All right. So I'm gonna use the old tire here and I'll take out the other things which I don't need it right now. This is the grease, SKF grease. Uh, this is the oil filter. And here's the tire. The tire is on the floor. Here you go. So this is how you place it. So that you know nothing touches the ground and then once I'm ready I will take out everything one by one there you go and start working on this now to take it out it's a, a little tricky so one sprocket uh, one bearing at the time I will push out the dust seal using a screwdriver if you plan to reuse this there you go. So I am taking the dust seal out slowly. Try not to damage it. So I'm going to reuse this. My bearing is ready. I can. I can actually feel that this is also ready to go. I will show you how it feels. I will try and. Yeah, so this is pretty much about to die soon. So yeah, it was about time for me to change it. There's the other dust seal. 
che non ti costa So before we start to put up the bearing in the wheel, what we need to do is basically clean this area and uh, grease it slightly on the walls so that you know, it will just slide in easily. Now uh, every time you put up the bearing inside, you have to make sure that you do not hammer the inside but the outside, this area. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do that. It's going to be a little difficult but Let's just see if you can see that. So for this I'm going to use some of the tools. Uh, you may not have all the special tools but if you do have some socket wrenches they do a good job. That's just a good way of having uh, the right kind of tools to put back in. Uh, we'll have to just match which socket wrench will match it. A little tad bit smaller, so I'm going to take a big size. This one, this is 29. And just about, so let's go to 30. Here, this is 30. And this is just perfect. So I'm going to simply use the size 30 to hammer down the bearing without damaging it at all. It is preferred that you have the fiber mallet because if by chance you keep it, you hammer anything else, you don't damage it. So, let's just show you something. So, you make sure that you are holding it right. First two tabs have to be very easy. Once it's gonna get in the place, it will automatically become straight. You don't have to worry about it being straight or Well, my bearing is set a little cross, so I'm gonna use this spanner to straighten it up a little bit. Again, I'm not gonna hit the inner side, I'm gonna only hit the outer side. Now my bearing is become straight, so I'm going to use this tool. Simply drive it in. And this is going in. And yeah, for some silly reason it's going a little curve. That's okay. Always hammer the direction. Yeah, it's pretty straight. So, yeah. As you can see, it's pretty much halfway in now. The bearing is gone in now. Mm. I'm going to try 32 just to make sure that it's just perfect. Okay. All the way inside. Now, I'll show you once it's completely in. Well, Here you go. So the bearing is now sitting properly in its place right here it's running free so yep this is good to go so the spacer shaft is here I'm just gonna clean it up and pull it back inside so once you fit the bearing you 
cannot actually take them out again and again. So every time you take them out, you are going to damage them slightly. So, yeah. Before I put it, I have to clean it. I have to make sure that everything is crisp. So once the bearing is put, you just have to push the dust seal with your hand and it will fit in. Once it's fitted, you just have to make sure that it's tight enough and in the right place, simply use the same tool to lightly hammer it up over there and it will go inside. There you go. See? So it's sitting perfectly. So nice clean job with the spacer inside. The bearing is in the place. Now I'm gonna have to put the wheel back. So I'll put things place in place. Uh, we have those outside spacers. So I'll be putting one on this side and one on the other side. Make sure when you're putting the wheel back, the sensor uh, side should be on the uh, back side. So basically this is the left and that is the right if you're facing the bike. 